Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've just had an Inside Star Citizen episode on server meshing and a recent summit that Clan Imperium did about getting server meshing into players' hands. So let's do a summary of that and talk a bit more about the context of what's going on. Cloud Imperium recently had its Avengers Assemble moment, they said, as they had all of the server meshing core teams, the strike team, sort of meeting in person in the UK for the first time, some of them, for a whole week. They were planning out the the final pieces and plans for server meshing's architecture and how they would actually implement it. Aligning everyone on the same page and working in the same direction is key for the next year. A lot of this summit focused on getting that right, but the summit's goal was to flesh out the exact roadmap for server meshing, at least static server meshing, based on work Cloud Imperium have been doing on persistent entity streaming. And persistent entity streaming is working, it's out the door, it might need some dialing in, but the next step is now server meshing and getting 4.0 out the door with pyro the secondary goal is to get the groundwork plan to enable features like jump points but primarily it's to get server meshing stage one server meshing and pyro out so static server meshing that stage one is what we will be getting with alpha 4.0 which will have shards which are effectively a collection of servers that will make up a star system have individual areas of space that are their own dedicated game servers. So basically you go Crusader, Hurston, Art Corp, they could be their own servers within a shard that seamlessly share data between each other. You don't know you're going onto a different server because it's entirely seamless. They are trying to be as efficient as possible when making these plans, learning from past features and challenges. They had originally wanted to get server meshing and persistent entity streaming sort of worked on and out the door together, but it was apparent that server meshing relied on persistent entity streaming so much so they had to focus on pez first their initial plans on server meshing and how to implement it from 2021 found many um sort of problems and limitations with the tech they had so they had to build new tech and work around these issues they've built various bits and pieces for server meshing while they were building out persistent entity streaming so they were working on some of it um uh, sort of in parallel so PES, though, is the foundation for server meshing to be laid upon. So, Cloud Imperium said, The first phase is the separation out of the replication layer that unlocks the pyro jump gate stuff and unlocks the server meshing stuff. We are getting a good plan for delivery. So, when you travel to pyro from Stanton via a jump point, they have to pass authority from one dedicated game server to another. So, they want to have multiple dedicated game servers per system. So, um, each shard, but they also kind of want to separate jump gates and the changing of star systems from server meshing in the short term so they can focus on delivering pyro ASAP. They are effectively two different problems to them now. The jump points are moving between servers that is a different star system and server meshing within a single star system, two, two different problems. Separating the replication layer from the dedicated game servers is the first big step for static server meshing. Cloud Imperium said, this is a piece of work that's going to last for quite a long time. So they also talked about edge cases of players dying in jump gates when changing between authorities. How does the transition between servers affect persistent entity streaming? Lots and lots of other problems and potential issues. And all of these things need answers. They also talked about dynamic server meshing, which is the end goal of server meshing. This allows any object container to potentially become a server based on the shard's needs, based on population of an area. So rather than predefined um, sort of servers based on like as we said earlier, Crusader and Art Corp, whatever, they'd then go, well actually anything can technically be a server, um, a room, a ship, a planet, and th they can be nested in each other, these servers, and they can also uh, spin down when they're not needed and become part of a different server. They're still working out how they would request additional dedicated game servers and assign them based on the needs of a particular shard. Once they are done with static server meshing, the 50 game teams need to then take it and adapt it to the code for the game, and they also would need to do this again, certainly for dynamic server meshing when it's done. So it's a big project and a lot of work. They didn't really give us any form of time frames, unfortunately. Is it possible that we could see 4.0 by the end of the year? I mean, it's possible we could see it in Evocati, but it's looking less likely just for the amount of work that needs to go into getting server meshing done. And we've seen what was happening with 3.18, where it took so long to get to open PTU. There was a spectrum thread, server meshing, persistent entity streaming, role related to jump points. 
wasn't this already figured out a long time ago? The original poster says, so I heard they were trying to figure out what happens with jump gates and tunnels with the new tech, but wasn't that laid out a long time ago? You have to jump through first and after jumping through successfully, the route is saved in your jump drive and your autopilot takes you through all times thereafter. So why is it even a discussion as to should the tunnels persist? As in, why would anything need to persist inside the tunnel, which is a one-way travel flow back and forth? You can't stop inside. If you die, there should be nothing to recover because physics literally stops you from recovering it. And on that topic, if you fail to get through the jump gate, why should you survive? Where's the risk? The lead up to this epic thing that connects a system, the weight, the responsibility between the pilot and the ship, and the sheer brutal unpredictability of time and space. But it's a video game. You respawn. Jump gates should be the dark zone of Star Citizen. You die, you lose what you had to the void. Better luck next time. But all it takes is one successful travel per jump in order to save that route in your jump drive and you can travel to it freely from then on. At least this is how it was laid out in the past, so why not just deliver it that way instead of trying to figure out how to completely rework how it works? Xylo responded, The takeaway from today's episode should not be that work just started, because that's simply not the case. Summits are not the beginning of work. Summits are traditionally a regrouping where people bring the lessons learned from the last year's worth of work together to determine what of the existing plan should be reinforced and where to course correct when necessary. The server meshing summit is no exception. A quick look at the public roadmap will show that work has been happening on both server meshing and jump points for some time now, with six teams on jump points and 19 teams on server meshing over the course of the last several years even back to before the public roadmap's current format can display. The episode is an experiment in multi-episode storytelling, so all the info and answers won't be present in the first instalment. This first part is about bringing our newer citizens up to speed on the goals set forth, the methods we go about to discover and decide them, and follow along with this journey as it continues to develop. So I thought that answer from Zyla gave a much greater context to exactly what we saw from that Inside Star Citizen episode, because yes, I did a summary of it, and that was pretty accurate to um, what they were talking about in the video, but the greater context there of, actually, this is a multi-part series, we're going to be talking more about serve meshing and some other bits uh, in the future, and obviously they've been working on serve meshing for quite a while, it's not just BAM, it's been worked on now, persistent entity streaming is effectively work on server meshing as well, but also things iterate and change, let's see where they go with server meshing and with jump points and with pyro, and I'm looking forward to them talking about it more. Boom, that's it for today's episode, but what do you think? Obviously, server meshing is key to making Star Citizen an MMO, and it's probably the most important thing for the game, other than it being sort of generally pretty and having great ship combat. But what do you think? Are you excited for serve meshing? Do you think we'll see it by the end of the year, or is that madness? Is it something that we'll see next year? Do you like Cloud Imperium talking about this sort of thing, even if it doesn't give us a huge amount of tangible gameplay information, when it's just sort of more them talking and rehashing what work they've previously done? Or do you need something a bit more meaty? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. That's the last Chevron knocked in, Mr. Daniel Jackson, who is legally distinct from any doctors of the same name. We've done it. We've connected to another world. Daniel Jackson, we're being hacked through the gates to the stars, which is also legally distinct from any other gates that travel to the stars. We should have got NordVPN, Daniel Jackson. We would have been able to browse the internet safely, access our favorite content on Netflix, and we would have been able to have privacy. We would have had less of these Egyptian-looking snake people attacking us too. You should check out nordvpn.com slash boardgamer and get yourself a great deal on NordVPN. Just click the link in the comments section below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For February, it's for a Crusader Spirit C1, the very cool looking multi-crew, multi-role competitor to the Cutlass Black and Freelancer. As it's a concept ship, you'll get a Cutlass Black until it's made flyable. You'll get lifetime insurance with the ship and a game package for Star Citizen 2. So all you need to play. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, then consider becoming a Patreon or using that join button under my YouTube videos to become a channel member. It goes a massive way to helping us make videos every day and you'll get some exclusive content from me and Zinya from time to time too. Become a board gamer today!